Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you guys had a great week. Hope you made it through the weather okay on Friday, Saturday. Um, it's good to see everybody this morning. Um, so today I want to kind of jump into, um, we've been on faith, hope, and love. Um, and so the first couple of, um, we've just finished a couple of messages on faith. Um, and remember, we define faith as being the, it's the conviction of something that's true. And so with that, you know, we, we talked, we saw different um, places where faith was used, the faith of the Roman centurion soldier, the faith of the Syrophoenician woman. Um, and so we began to see this faith as, you know, as something that's tangible. Um, it's something that we act upon as though it's true. Actually, last week we talked about the fact that we see, you know, you know Moses endured by seeing that which was invisible. Talking about seeing God, so seeing Him beyond um, everything. And so that's what faith becomes, is the conviction of something that's true, that's something that is beyond what we can actually see. Well, today, in the next two weeks or so, I want to focus on hope and talk about hope. So we're going to define hope, and then we're going to talk, talk about what hope is and what hope's attached to um, and how that hope can um, help uh, bring us up into the expectations um, that are around faith, hope, and love. You know, part of this series of messages with faith, hope, and love, or says the greatest of these is love, is to encourage and continue to um, cultivate you know, the basics of who we are as believers in the kingdom, the basics, the things that bring nutrients to us, the things that, that, um, that move us and that make us who we are. Um, just to get down there and cultivate that foundation. Maybe some places that need to be revisited and some places that we look up and go, those areas are already shored up in our faith and we're okay there. So part of this is just to help keep cultivating that place. So hope. What is hope? Um, if you want to write this down, um, hope is, it's a Greek word, elpis, and they defined it as a confident expectation of receiving something good. And so, biblically, when you have hope, it's you're, you have this confident expectation. So it's really attached to faith um, as well. But <clears throat> you have this confident expectation of receiving something um, that's good. And, you know, a lot of times we'll say, I hope um, my circumstance change. I hope, um, I hope. I get a good grade on a test. Um, I hope I get a raise. Um, I hope that bill is not very much. And so there's a lot of things that we say, I hope, I hope, I hope in. Um, and so we attach something good to hope. It's like hope is like we expect something good to come. We're expecting to receive something. But just to, for, as an understanding on hope, if you look in the, the Gospels, the actual word hope is not even there. There's only one place... Um, that I saw it was in, and you can text me later and say, Mark, I found it in other places, but I've looked at the Gospels and Luke 6.34 was the only place I found it. And Jesus is talking about the fact that, you know, we hope as um, we invest in something or give somebody else money, we hope they return it to us and they pay us back. So it's not even in the same context of this hope right here. And I'll tell you the reason why. It's because the hope is not just a... Um, an emotion or an expectation, hope is actually a person. You know, hope is actually Jesus. And that's why hope is not found in the Gospels because Jesus is present. So you don't have to have hope. You know, we're hoping, we're looking for something to change. We're looking for something to come. And now in the midst, the disciples are there in the midst and they're there and they, they're actually walking with hope. Because it's Jesus, so everything is in their midst. And so they're not actually looking for hope um, because hope's actually there. It's not until we get into the epistles of Paul <clears throat> and you start reading past that that we see, you know, you see faith, hope, and love in 1 Corinthians 13, Romans 5 5. You know, it says, Hope doesn't disappoint, or hope doesn't bring us to shame. And you'll see in Hebrews, as a matter of fact, go to Hebrews um, chapter 7, verse 8, 19. This is going to kind of refer back to Jesus being our hope. Um, and so verse 19 starts out, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in 
of a better hope. He's talking about Christ here through which we draw near to God. So he's talking about Christ, that that's hope. If you go back to, you go to 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, um, go to that. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. And so I think what I want, as we continue to go through today, what I want us to get to today, back in Romans 5, what I want us to get to today is to understand that the hope that we have is in a person. And it's not only in a person, it's in something that's happened in the past that we can anchor in and secure ourselves in. You know, hope is in Jesus. Hope's actually in the atonement of the cross and what happened on that day, the expression of Jesus through the 30 years that He lived on, on earth, the fact that He took our sins and He says, by our stripes, by His stripes, we are healed. And so by His stripes, you know, things have, begun, have been made available to us. And so what's been made available through the cross, being forgiven of our sins, being made righteous, not... Not that we do things to be righteous, but the cross and believing in Jesus, we are made righteous. And so in all that, our hope is tied back to that person of Jesus, that event, who he was. It's all tied in Jesus. And so as, as we have hope, hope actually begins to transform from hope in an event changing or something, but it's hope in a person, in the person of Jesus, and it's really tied back to what we believe. So take a second and think about this. Hope is a confident expectation of receiving something good. And so I'll ask you right now to think, what is your hope anchored in? Like, what are you anchored in for hope? What do you hope changes? And so is that hope anchored in a belief that God is working something, that Jesus is working something. And regardless of how I see the physical outcome, my hope sits with Him as I move forward. And so when we begin to sit in that person of hope, Jesus, we begin to sit there, even if something doesn't manifest the way we want to, it's tied to how we believe and walk that out. Hope is really tied to belief or unbelief. If you go to Romans 5, Verse 5, and it says, Paul writes here, he says, Now hope does not disappoint, and in the ESV it says, or put us to shame. But because of the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. <clears throat> so it says, hope never disappoints us, and it never puts us to shame. And so this hope that we have is not a future thing shifting. Our hope actually is in what has happened on the cross, and we literally pull from that, accepting what has happened and what Jesus has purchased through His death and resurrection, we go back and we put our hope and our belief there as we live our life forward. Go to Philippians. Now, so far I've, I've been in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19, where we talked about Jesus is the hope. 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Jesus, our hope, and Romans 5.5, 5, it says, you know, now hope, and you could put Jesus there. Now, Jesus does not disappoint or put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so we've looked at those verses. I want you to flip to Philippians now. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Actually, chapter 1, we're going to do Read a little bit before that. Because I think it's very significant that we get anchored in understanding where our hope is. Because hope is not this wispy thing that sits out here in the future somewhere hoping something changes or shifts. You know, hope sits in this person of Jesus. And as we rest in Him, it becomes, do I believe what actually was purchased in His death and His resurrection? Do I believe what that represented, to believe what J Jesus represents in my life as my righteousness, as my peace, as my joy. Do I believe these things about Him? And 
how do I appropriate that? How do I appropriate belief on that? Because for me to hope something changes, it's okay. Paul says it's okay if something, if I'm with a little bit of stuff, I don't have very much in my life, I'm content. If I have a lot of stuff in my life, I'm content. It's because he's attached to this person, this contentment that he has in his life is attached to a person, the person of Jesus that he believes in, this belief that goes deep. Here's a verse I'd like for everybody just to put in your memory bank um, before I get into Philippians chapter 1. Put this verse in there, John chapter 6, verse 29. Before that, Thomas is going like, what, you know, what's our work? Lord, Lord, as he's sitting there with Jesus and they're walking together, and he's asking, what's our work? What are we to do? And he says, your work is to believe. Your work is to believe. And so I think continually, you know, our hope has to be wrapped up in Jesus. And as it's wrapped up there, it has to be wrapped up in the point that I continually am being renewed in my mind on how I believe. Because when I hope for something to change, when it's not anchored in Jesus and it doesn't change, I'm left disappointed. And even though we may have some disappointment in our life, as we continue to anchor to Jesus and believe, then our life, as, our life will continue to increase and unfold and continue to have the blessing and the honor of Him upon it. Now, that might be a process. It might be through time. But at any point... I don't want us as believers, because Jesus says the only work that you're to do is to believe. So what I want us to do is to continue to think, if I'm hoping that something changes, what do I believe helps bring that change? What do I believe helps move that change in that circumstance in my life? What actually gets in there around and moves things around and actually pushes it? And it goes back to how we believe. So John 6 I'm just going to flip to it, and I'll read it exactly out what it says. And if you, whatever you memorize, and I want you to memorize this. I don't, and don't just kind of go like, okay, it's just another verse. I want you to like seriously get in there and dig around. Um, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Let me get there, John. I want to read it right out, right out for you. If I quote it for you, six twenty-nine. I'm reading in the New King James Version. 28 says, Then they said to him, this is his disciples talking, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And this is what Jesus said, verse 29. Jesus answered to them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who he sent. Talking about believing in the Father of heaven in whom he believe. He says, this is the work of God, that you believe in Him, me, Jesus, in whom God sent. And that's, and I know that might seem simple and kind of boiled down, but at the end uh, of everything, Jesus says, if you can believe, if you can set your mindset upon me, you know, you're hoping for something to change in your life, you're hoping for a circumstance to move, you're hoping for things in your life, I'm the, I'm the source of everything. And so if you can believe in me, if you, can, if you can attach your hope to me, the person of Jesus, if you can believe and renew your mind and continue to walk in it, then you'll never be moved, you'll never be shaken. A lot of times we put hope in things changing to bring peace. We put hope in things um, being different in order to bring um, you know, increase and however those things may bring increase and hope and peace, if they're not anchored in an eternal place, a place where the source of life comes from, if they're not anchored there, whatever we experience or whatever we move past um, will just be a fleeting thing, the feeling, the emotion. Because really, um, if we're not hoped, if our hope's not anchored in the person of Jesus, which is eternally and eternal, then... We don't have a secure hope at all. So John, so you can just memorize this, John 6, 29. You can just ask yourself, what's the work I'm to be doing? 
The work is to believe. The work is to believe in Him whom He sent. That's the work. That's where all the hope is wrapped up. All of our expectations of things changing is wrapped up in that person of Jesus. Now, go to Philippians chapter 1, go to verse 19, and listen to what Paul says here. He says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, pause for a second. The context here, Paul's in jail. Um, he's in a Roman jail. They're not nice places to be. They're even worse than the jails we have today. Um, and so he's in this place and he's writing this back. And as he's writing it, he's, he's kind of describing. And he's, he's saying, hey, your prayer is going to, and by the Spirit of God is going to help me be delivered. And so he, he's in this difficult spot. So he says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ. According to, listen to this, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Now, let's unpack this for a second. Verse 20, so he says that my deliverance will come through prayer and through the Spirit of Christ according to, according to the earnest expectation and hope. And so, I guess in our belief, our belief system has to generate an expectation and a hope. So how we believe in Jesus, what we believe Jesus is about, what we believe Jesus can do, that has to be generated and has to be according to the expectation and hope that we have. This is where Paul's boldness comes from. This is where his fire comes from. And there's one thing I'm convinced of, and for our body and for the body of Wilmington and for the body of all believers um, on the planet, is I believe this, is that if... If our hearts get on fire with Jesus, we, if we get on fire knowing that our hope is and our belief is in what Jesus actually said, and we get on fire for what, he, what the good news really is, and that begins to burn inside of us, this Jesus thing, the one that makes us righteous, the one that pull, takes all shame away and guilt away and gives us the ability to, to manifest this life of Jesus in the Word. If we get on fire for that, there's nothing that can quench that. You could not stop Paul from talking about the gospel. It says, I don't care if you kill me or if I'm alive or I'm dead. I'm still preaching the gospel. I'm still living my life this way and I'm still, I'm still moving in the kingdom. I'm so convinced that, that all of our households that even were gathered today and each one of us are gathered and each one of us have this this seed of the kingdom, this, this mustard seed of faith, this thing that sits within us, that as we partner with just the mustard seed of faith, because Jesus says that's all you need, you don't need very much, and as we partner with that, with our belief, and we put that belief together, we begin to walk in that with an expectation and a hope, and that hope being Jesus, how there can't be this great boldness and this great release of, of love and compassion This magnificence, what Paul says here. This is how he says it. Again, in verse 20, according to the earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by death or by life or by life by death. And so he had this expectation that it didn't make it. He had this expectation and hope in Jesus that it didn't make a difference. What happened? He was not going to be ashamed. He wouldn't be ashamed. And he wouldn't be made him, you know, he wouldn't be ashamed. Now, as I was talking about our faith last week and the weeks before, you know, our faith will pull us into places to take risk in order to, and we might be seen a different way. And when we begin to hope and believe outside of people's cultural theology or their cultural norms, it's going to make people feel uneasy. But that's where our belief comes. 
is that we have to be so settled on what we believe. I believe the only sin that Jesus really condemns. Well, I was reading William Branham, um, a quote from him the, the, the other day, and it talks about, and he's, he's um, an early evangelist, and as he's talking, he says he believes the only sin that really um, that Jesus condemns is the sin of unbelief. And underneath the sin of unbelief is adultery and lying and, and um, fornication and, and all the things, you know, lust, jealousy, all pride, all the things that we would call sin, but all that equates back to underneath a subset of unbelief because we don't believe in the atonement. We don't believe that we've been made righteous. We don't believe that we've been accepted in love because of Jesus. You know, there's a belief um, deficit. There's a deficiency in how we believe. And so, therefore, in that unbelief, we begin to have all the other things in our life, the, the, the things of, of, of lying and cheating and um, adultery and all the things that come with it, you know, sexual sin, pornography, all those things that come in there, all of because we don't believe in the atonement of the cross. We don't believe in what's actually happened. So I think today for our gather groups and for you guys, I want to boil this back down and say that hope, is a person and the person is Jesus and that and that beyond hope that person of Jesus it's linked to and connected to how we believe and how we believe creates this expectation of how we live life and what we um, are anchored to and that's where if we're going to talk about hope, I think we really have to talk about the person of Jesus that we believe in. Because I can only, to hope only in a circumstance or something changes, I'm looking for something or something or someone to move it. And apart from that happening, then we have deferred places. You know, we have hope deferred. We have a, a deferred place in our life. We go back to Proverbs 13. You know, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Jesus is the desire of the nations. As we walk with this person who's desired by the nations, they don't even know they desire him. He's desired by, by so many. As we walk with that desire, hopes and our desires are fulfilled because it becomes a tree of life to us. Because Jesus is hope. That's why in the Gospels you don't see hope talked about you because hope was present in the person of Jesus. So maybe what I want everybody to do in their groups today is maybe pray for one another. Stir up an expectation. I mean, this expectation Paul had, again, I'm going to read it in Philippians chapter 1. It says, according to this earnest expectation. And so may, my question is, do we have an earnest expectation upon what we believe in Jesus? Do we believe something's going to shift and change? Expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in the body, whether, and he says in my body, whether by life or by death. And so today I'm wondering um, about you know, what do we hope in? What are, what's our hope tied to? But also, what's our expectation of our belief system? And, and do we continue to believe beyond the fact that we don't see if something changed? Do we believe and have faith long enough to see Jesus break through in part of our life? Because Paul said, I'm content either way. I'll walk with the way, but I'm not changing my belief system. I'm anchored in what I know to be true in Jesus. Okay, y'all discuss that, and um, next week we'll finish up on hope, and um, then we'll jump into love. Have a great day.